All right, it's a little bit late because it's holidays and conventions and all sorts of biz, but we are here again about, you know, there's only been one episode so far of the winter 2019 season of anime. Yep. Uh, and we haven't watched any of it. We're only a little late, and importantly, it's not like we watched any of these anyway. Right, so we're gonna, we're gonna judge them, and you're gonna go watch, uh, and if you, we say anything, you know, we give anything a good judgment, you can go watch episode one and two, yeah. probably right now, by, at least by the time this video is, is out, maybe even episode three if I'm really lazy. In, uh, <laughs> the video. Uh, but for anyone who hasn't watched this before, this is Judge Anime by its cover. We're going to go over all of the anime listed on the wonderful website, AnnieChart.net, for the winter 2019, end of 2018, beginning of 2019 anime season. Only the TV anime that are new, and based only on the scant information on the website, AnnieChart.net, we are going to predict slash guess slash judge what those shows are all about, whether we're gonna bother to check them out, or if we will only check them out under uh, excellent circumstances. <laughs> or duress. Or duress, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but we're first, usually pretty right. Right, well, we are usually pretty right. You can watch all our old videos in the series to decide how right and wrong we are, because we are often also wrong. No. Uh, so to check how right or wrong we are, let's look back at the fall 2018 season very briefly and see some of the shows there. and what we were right or wrong about. Trouble is, we're in a golden age of just non-Japanese animation, so I've been mostly watching, like, BoJack and She-Ra and Steven Universe and I've all been, this other stuff. I've been re-watching Adventure Time. But, uh, uh, but anyway, looking at this, the first thing that stands out to me of the previous season is the SSS Gridman show. Oh, yeah. Which I knew was a remake of the show that Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad was based on, and I just thought it was going to be you know, a kid robot show or whatever, I, you know, I wasn't too excited about it. Pretty sure but that's what we said. But apparently, I haven't watched it. I haven't watched the new Studio Trigger SSS Gridman show, but Twitter lost their shit over it, and it was Studio Trigger, so I feel like I gotta go back and put that one in the queue. Yep, I'm definitely gonna watch that one. At least, you know, see what the deal was. Uh, but yeah, I don't think anything else really stood out from last season looking at this list. It was just a tough time to get me to watch a lot of anime. It yeah. was just the wrong time. Well, also none of these anime... I did watch a bunch of Tonegawa, but that was from the previous one. Right, yeah. Just looking at this season, uh, past season, it's like, all right, I feel like I didn't miss, miss much. So let's move right in to what we're all here to do is judge the end of 2018, beginning of 2019 anime season. And the first anime that comes up is Mob Psycho right, 102. So sec Ma second Mob season. Mob Psycho exists. That's what this reminded me, because I never finished it, even though it was fantastic. So I watched Mob Psycho season one, the whole thing. Oh, I only watched like the first half? I watched the whole thing. And what it, what it really did for me, I know a lot of people love this show, and understandably, because the beginning part was actually pretty awesome, right? Especially everyone's favorite character. What was his name? Ryzen? Yeah. Think, something like that. Anyway. It was way good, but it gave me the same feeling I got when I watched Naruto originally, which is mm. that beginning part of Naruto has funny ninja school, which is the best. And then it becomes fighting show. And not good fighting show like Fist of the North Star or JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or, you know. But more like one step short of the tournament begins. Right. So Mob Psycho 100 did sort of the same thing where the first part of the show was, oh my god, look at these hilarious, awesome characters, look at the crazy scenario, I'm loving this. Yep. And then, the second half, as the season went on, it wasn't, it was some fighting, but it was also just sort of like, you know, shown in action, you didn't have that sort of rising funny stuff going on. It's just on hard to keep me in, I mean, episode. I'm not watching any of these shonen shows, that ship sailed, I just yeah. can't. So, I'm wondering if Mob Psycho 100 Season 2... Are they going to go back to that, or is it just going to continue with the shonen action well, part? Well, there, has there ever been a shonen show that went back? Mm. Ever. One Piece goes back and forth constantly. Yeah. If you watch One Piece, it basically it's like, fight, fight's over, the good, oh, that's why I liked One Piece, fight again, oh. Someone should make oh, a One Piece. Oh, that's why I liked One Piece, oh, fight I want to see a One Piece edit that just every fight, it just immediately cuts to the end of the fight. 
That would be great. I would watch all of that. Or like Initial D that's just the races, nothing else. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, here we go. Next show, Tate no Yusha no Nariagari. Oh, crap. I think this is, yeah, this is that Shield Hero show. I haven't heard anything yep. about this. He must rise beyond the legendary Shield Hero. So unfortunately, I learned a little bit about it. And as best I can tell, this show's primary motivating plot point is a false rape accusation against a man who then buys a slave. What? Yeah. I mean, the description sounds like, half, sounds halfway there. The description says there's an otaku who spends all his time on games and manga and suddenly finds himself summoned to a parallel universe where he's got to become the shield hero. Which is already the, that's like, already, super played out generic crappy that's trope. That's already a fantasy wish fulfillment thing it's one for step, sad, lonely dudes. It's one step away but from... there's nothing listed here about any rape bag. Yep, yeah, it's one step away from just transported to an MMO. Right. Like, video game RPG I think as it's, opposed I to... I think it's just actual fantasy world. World as opposed to MMO. So the problem is, while I have not seen any of this yet, based on some Twitter chatter that I saw, because this is definitely that Shield Hero show, the fans of it seem to be pretty creepy. The show has all these problems that I just outlined, and it literally has like leveling up and skill stat crap. Uh, well, we'll see about this, but yeah, the the girl character she doesn't seem to be perverted. I think she's technically, anyway, but she does have cat ears, some kind of animal. I ear. think the raccoon ears, and I think she's technically three. Oh boy. It's one of the, there's, there, every single warning sign on earth is there. Based, based on Anna she chart, She's not scantily clothed, nor is she uh, well endowed. Well, because it's a technically she's situation. I think the problem is Anna chart implies it's just going to be a boring uh, MMO style show, like typical otaku. Hey, it doesn't transport. look like a good show, but I just don't know about if anything you just said is true. Yeah. All right. Kakegurui XX, a second season of the anime that was announced at the cultural festival something. So I don't know anything about the first season. Did we talk about it? I don't Was it that unremarkable? I'm looking at the images of the prequel and that poster does look familiar. But I feel like I would have called it the darker than black based on that <laughs> tiny image I can see there. I don't know. <laughs> so Did it leave such a such a little impression on us? I no one said I don't know I had like no information on which to judge this other than there there seem to be two characters with school uniforms one is kneeling or on the ground the other one's helping them up in a field of flowers with a tower in the background those are all anime cliches yep piled together it's notable that even Anna Twitter has said as far as I can tell nothing about the previous iteration of this show. I don't know. So if 1X couldn't do it, I don't think 2X is going to do it. If you didn't already watch 1X, don't bother with 2X. <laughs> All right. Yakusoko no Neverland. Oh, uh, Neverland Promise? Smart, there are smart kids at an orphanage. They're under the care of someone they call mom, who's not the real mom because it's an orphanage. Muppet Babies reboot? The, no, it says the orphanage <laughs> is actually a good orphanage. Oh. But there's a dark... Spooky truth behind it about Ooh. the outside world that they can't see. So they're kept in an orphanage that seems to be good, uh, but then they discover the terrible secret of what's outside the orphanage. You know, it's interesting because Shinseki Yoria from the New World had that. Like, here's a perfect world. Maybe there's something up. Kids explore. I do love me an anime where it's about what the secret inside the wall or the secret outside the wall. Yep. This gives me actually a slight vibe of the Abyss show. It does. Right? What's at the bottom of the Abyss? And there were also orphans in the Abyss show too, right? Only but also the way this... This is less... At least on the at the surface level, it's less supernatural fantasy than as than the Abyss show and more society, right? Yeah, but stuff. this poster gives me a a little bit These of these kids all have like tattoos on their necks. But it gives me a numbers. little bit of a Princess Tutu vibe, just because it's like stylized a fork and a knife on top of well, a they're, clock. They're standing, a, they're standing on a plate that has numbers like a clock and has yep. a fork and a knife, so it's a clock and a plate and they're going to be eaten. Allegory and maybe, symbolism. Maybe it's symbolizing that the orphanage is actually a place where they grow children to be eaten yeah. by monsters who live outside. But the neck tattoos and just the character designs imply more a nine doors, nine dollars, nine kids, nine deaths, nine endings type show. Right. But so far, this is the number one show to check out this season. Let's see if anything beats it. All I'll right. watch it. Boogie Pop wa 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 wara wanai. It's just a, more Boogie Pop Phantom? So I don't know. So Boogie Pop Phantom is a show from like 15 plus years ago. And it was a good show. Was it? I yeah. only watched like a few episodes. I don't remember if it was good, but it was based around the, like urban legends 
and weird stuff in a city. I liked it a lot. And I could watch it again. So the character, see it has that same teeth pattern, that same tall hat. Yep. So it's definitely related to the same thing. This isn't just someone reusing the name Boogie Pop. This is definitely related to that original Boogie Pop. I don't know if it's a redo. Oh, it says relations, source Boogie Pop, the light novel, alternative Boogie Pop of R and I Boogie Pop Phantom. So it's so it's an alternate mm -hmm. retelling of the original. So basically a redo, right? Or an alternate telling of the same story. I'll give it one episode because I really like the original Boogie Pop Phantom. You watched the whole thing? Uh, a lot of it. I watched like a handful of episodes. It was all right. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting if this is maybe just because the other show is so old that they want that it needs a redo. Yeah, I wonder right? if it'll be higher production if values. If it's such a popular thing, but nobody's going to seek out that old anime so we can boost it again by doing the same anime. I feel again. like, it, especially in the U.S., Boogie Bob Phantom is pretty much forgotten among anime fans. I mean, only anime fans who were anime fans in 2002, 3, 4 would, no. know, would know it, right? But yeah, uh, probably going to be, you know... Like, uh I'll watch some Boogie Pop to see if it gives me those same feels as the old Boogie Pop. Right. And if it doesn't, I'll just watch the old Boogie uh, Pop. Oh, alright, we got a contender that's probably beaten all the shows we t judged already. Oh. This is Dororo. So if you don't know Dororo, Dororo is a classic A plus Tezuka manga. Uh, it's had some adaptation in the past a little bit, but not really recently and not well done. This seems like what studio is this gonna be? The character designs, like the way it looks like they're going to be animated, look really good. Producer Twin Engine Studio Mappa and Tezuka Productions. And it looks like a like it looks like it's evoking Tezuka without cleaving too closely to oh, Tezuka. Yeah. And the uh, the trailer thumbnail at least looks well well done. So yup. Yeah. But just like that little upturned bit on the costume and the hair, like this looks like they're going to get it right. Mm -hmm. I want to watch the hell out of this. Right. So, Unless the first episode is bad, but even then, I'll probably give it a few episodes. Yeah, but uh, I highly recommend reading the Dororo manga, which is on the shelf up there. Somewhere back Somewhere there. Somewhere back there. Uh, but absent reading the Dororo manga, here you go. It looks like we're going to get a high-quality adaptation of a high-quality manga. Can't complain. I'll probably be watching this. There's probably an episode out already. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Maybe. All right. Date Alive 3. I pretty much don't trust anything that has the word date in the title. Isn't, uh, so isn't, what's the difference between like Date Alive and like all those other, you know, like, um, you know, games where like you're raising idols and like I playing can't them tell. Am I just too old? Like they're all the same to me, right? I can't even remember what those other ones are called. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those, right? It's some game where you level up idol girls. Thing is, a thing that has multiple sequels where people are vaguely confused about it, you're either already on the Date Alive train or you are not by this point. I am not on that train. That train has left the station. I'm not on the train of any of those things. All right, next. Okay. Kaguya-sama wa kokurasetai, colon, Tensai Tachi no Ranai Zunosen. I've never seen the word Zunosen. Before. I have no idea what Zunosen means. <laughs> um, <laughs> Prestigious University Student Council. All right. Uh, I, student Council seems like it's always a, a good thing. They're geniuses among geniuses. Ooh. Uh, and they start to fall in love with each other. Is this a romance show? Pride will not allow them to confess to one another. Uh, comedy psychological romance. So it's basically... Wait, psychological romance? Well, love is war. Their battle to make the other confess begins now. So here's what I think this show's gonna be. Right. I'm actually got a really good idea about what this show is. Because I have, I have an alternative idea, potentially. So here's what it is. You got a typical student council situation, but yep. there's all these geniuses that are on it, right? And they're in love. And rather than the stereotypical, like, oh, we're too shy... And, but also, they are too shy, they won't say anything. Yep. It's going to be a Death Note style intellectual combat. I can see that. Much like, you know, light versus, right? No. Nah. Uh, and of trying to get the other person to confess. So it's going to play out a lot like Death Note, only instead of being high stakes and actually about killing and murder, it's going to be about a much more lighthearted topic of trick the other person into confessing they like me. Because the higher stakes will probably just like, be... Right, and you'll see a lot of scenes like, oh, I will do this, no, and then I will do, oh, but then they will do this, oh no! Oh, I've taken over the kendo club to make a thing happen because he loves the kendo club, oh no! Right. It's I gonna, could watch this. Yeah, I think it'll be very funny, actually, this show. I hope so. I mean, the character designs look good. There's no warning signs. All right, so this could be, you know, not some kind of A-plus anime, but this could definitely be like a feel-good, fun anime that I think will be 
maybe the the secret riser when I almost feel like it. it could be on the level of like the first half of Karakano. And I think episode one isn't even out yet. It doesn't come out for two days. Also, who out there remembers Karakano? That's a show that's forgotten. Uh, anyway. All right, domestic. That's a bad word. To have. <laughs> that's, that's a bad word to have an anime title. At least it isn't domestic date online. Domestic na kanojo. High schooler. Oh no, nope. high schooler in love with the teacher. Eh, 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 eh. But then he meets a girl and ends up sleeping with her. His father announces he's getting remarried to a woman with two daughters of her. Own. What? G -G next. Nope. Next. Nope. 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 All right. Idols. Five tobun no hanayome. Idols. One day a high school second year... Oh no, private tutoring gig with good pay, but his pupils are his classmates, and they're quintuplets. Harem show with five quintuplets. Alright, five sisters harem show. Five sister harem show, he's tutoring them all. A romantic comedy, he's going to fall in love with all of them one by one. He's, yep, he's gonna solve each of their problems. You got all kinds of different ones. Serious big boob one. Yep, whimsical one. one. Siri, uh... More serious and quiet one, yelling anyway, one. Anyway, harem show, next. The only good thing about a quintuplet show is it means that none of them are the young one. I guess not. <laughs> They're all the young one. All right. Revisions. <gasps> Here's the darker than black, You and baby. your darker than black. <laughs> <laughs> An extreme crisis will befall the five at a time. The five will protect everyone. I guess they're supernaturally powered kids are to defend Wait, the mysterious phenomenon known as, in quote, Shibuya Drift. Transported 300 years into the quote future. It's got the proper nouns. It's got the terrible secret of space It's got all the darker than black stuff mechanical robots meets a mysterious girl who's kidnapped by someone all these characters It's another one of those shows supernatural kids have to you know fight something evil that's... Yep bunch of proper nouns in quotes. There's a secret of space. All right uh, Watashi ni tenshi ga mayorita exclamation point Four panel comedy uh, show. It's based on a four coma. That's always a good sign. Yo. There's a shy college student, an otaku, a fifth grader, and someone falls in love with someone, and then it's comedy. It's only 12 episodes. It looks cute and funny. Like, yep. uh, you know, it, it looks to me like it's going to be in the same vein as, you know, say, Azumanga Dayo, only less good. Yeah. Less less crazy, less good. Definitely not like, as zany like, as like a Nietzsche Joe. Right. It's basically going in that direction towards the Nietzsche Joes and the Azamanga Dios and stopping before it gets there. Yep. Right? I think it'll be a little more moe and a little less good. Right. Less a little more moe, less good, but same same genre. Alright, so if you really have watched all the Nietzsche Joe and Azamanga, maybe you can watch this. Alright. 3D Kanojo Real Girl 2. <laughs> Second season of 3D Kanojo. Sounds bad to me. I feel like we said we wanted to watch this one and we just didn't. I don't remember. So now there's more of it, so it's it must have done okay. Based on the title and the imagery, I think someone's dating a virtual girl or got a virtual girl to come in the real world to date them or something along those lines. That's just my guess because I what, what do I know about freaky anime. I feel like we'll just go back and watch the previous episode where we tried to review this and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be funny if I said something completely different. Guys, last yeah, time. what did we say about this show? <laughs> I don't remember it. Go, go, call us out, please. Okay, Maho Shoujo, Tokushusen Asuka. This looks like an older kind of anime. Like this looks like almost a reimagining of those '90s anime. Who drew that girl in the front? Uh, if you're gonna, you're drawing big boobs to be perverted. And you don't even draw them. Well, they're more like a naga boob. No, those are those are like messed up. Man. I can't quite tell. That maybe is, there's some armor. It's a maybe. tiny image. That is. But that nurse. They don't look right. That that girl with the nurse looking hat. That is straight out of like '90s Gennaro anime. Mm. It looks like a fantasy anime. We got a bunch of girls who all look like ready for combat with big boobs. You got a cute animal creature. You know, you got whatever. Generic 90s anime, Five magical girl Five different magical nonsense. special girl ops force, okay. There's no reason to watch this. This might as well be Eric's Vaju. There might not right. even be an anime. All right. Egao no Daika. Upcoming original animation celebrating Tatsunoko Productions 55th anniversary. So there already was... Didn't we already have a Tatsunoko anniversary yeah, we anime did. last season? Pretty sure. Which was like a robot show, right? Uh, and now we have another Tatsunoko anniversary show. Uh, okay. It wasn't like in a Gotcha Man one or something? I think, yeah, it was the Gotcha Man thing, I think. Was this, I forget. Magfest scrambled my brain, so... Yeah, anyway. Uh, on a planet from Earth, the Kingdom Princess Yuki is 12. Uh, whatever. 
nothing really stands out that this is going to be worth watching. Yeah, I feel like if you're a fan of Tatsunoko and you want to get in on their anniversary celebration, maybe you know this is maybe this is a redo of some older Tatsunoko thing. The thing is, I'm always leery that we're now. not aware of. I'm leery of any anime, movie, TV show, whatever that's released as part of an anniversary of anything ever since Sailor Moon Crystal came out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, usually it's like they spend a bunch of money to do something, you know, but it's not actually like a new original good thing. Like anniversary shows. It's just something shows, that got a lot of money spent on. Anniversary shows just always feels like someone in the studio said the anniversary of X is coming up. We should do something with X to revitalize it as opposed to, hey, we can make this Tezuka thing and make it good. Let's just make it because it's good. All right. Anyway. All right. Endro. Exclamation point. Naral Island, a continent with swords so it's, so and it's, magic. So it's a fantasy show. It's a demon king. Uh, it's a, on an island from the first... It's already island episodes from the first episode. Girls attend a school for adventurers to learn how to beat the demon king when he appears. The only thing that worries... Well, not worries me, but... The main I, character is absent-minded and has a hero's body. I'd rather see something like more Slayers type fantasy world nonsense. There's a quiet otaku magician character. Yeah. Oh, then, they, they, oh there's four girls. They 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 form a party uh, of adventurers. School for adventurers. Eh. Mm. If it wasn't girls, right? In that you know where. I'm just leery of any show that just has an all-girl no, cast. If it wasn't moe-ish girls. Yeah, they're a little too moe. The plot itself could be all right. But it is. Though, Mao, that monster uh, horn-looking girl, gives me a little bit of an Akumako feeling. She's probably the best character. She's probably definitely the best character. But she's listed as supporting, not mean. Yeah, that's the problem. The supporting, the supporting characters with horns are the best characters in any anime. Obviously. All right. <laughs> Dokyonen Wahiza, Tokidoki, Atamu no Ue. Mystery writer who isn't good at dealing with people, fine. Oh, dude, it's, like, it's someone watching a cat they saved, like, and adopted, and then... Being a writer based on the hijinks they watch the cat get into. Oh. This actually sounds pretty interesting. It sounds like a lighthearted, kind of, you know, chill anime. But if you look at the photo, not the poster for the anime. Yep. Not the image there, but the one for the manga. That looks really good. It looks like an upset dude with a cat on his head, like, mm, Yep. Which is a good vibe. Can watching the inexplicable, inexplicable behaviors of a cat form material for a novel? This is worth giving a shot. Yeah. Uh, it's also, if you look at the photo, there's like a, a bunch of dudes and like one girl. Normal looking people, not moe looking people. Right, no. People wearing normal everyday clothes. And the cat looks like it's going to be an actual cat, not a magical girl. The cat looks like it's the main character. I hope the cat's the main character. It I hope it's right here. Cat. Characters, Subaru and Haru. Haru is the cat. Cat yep. is main character. Also from the manga, the cat looks really good with those eyes. Yeah. I'll watch this. This could be a good show. All right. Bang, but bang is spelled with a capital B and, ba cap and a capital G. Bang. Bang, dream, exclamation point, second season. I didn't see the first season. Uh, but this, uh, usually when there's a second or third season of something, any chart will just say second season. But here they're actually giving a description of the show, which is interesting. Student council, members of poppin' parties, so they're like in an idol group, I assume. Mm. I want to have a live with everyone. Let the music start. It's an idol show. Bang dream. Has there ever been a good idol anime? Uh, yes, but don't. Good for me. people who don't care a lot about idols. Maybe Macross 7. All right. Let's <laughs> <do>. <laughs> I'll give you that one. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if that counts. Uh, as, I don't know if it counts as good or as idol. It depends. Oh, no. Eh. All right. Kamuri Kusa the, with K's. The science fiction action story follows girls who fight with weird entities nicknamed Mushi. But we already got Mushishi! <laughs> and survive in a world of red fog. Red fog feels like it's a proper noun. So the art looks cool with the red fog. You can yeah. see the red fog in the poster. But I don't know if the show's gonna be good. It's hard to say because the character designs look a little moe. Rena looks a little crazy though. Maybe yeah. she's like a wacky character that mixes it up. Right? I it, seems, it seems like you've got. You know, fox haired girl, right? Happy girl, angry girl, and insane girl, and insane girl. So it's a, a three way team. Yep, I feel like it's would never stab, would stab after a warning, would stab as a warning. The three <laughs> characters. <laughs> <laughs> 
if it's that, I might watch it. Maybe. You know, it, it feels like maybe this... Oh, based on Tatsuki's winning entry from the 24th 3D anime contest in 2012. Uh, but maybe it's a poorly animated 3D CG thing. But it could also be based on something that was pretty clever and interesting that was entered into a contest. In one hand, it feels like the plot of this anime is so basic, like fighting supernatural things in a world of red fog. That sounds like every anime ever. But it looks like, hey, interesting characters meet, right? So maybe that could work. Yep, it depends. Something based on a contest entry feels like it could either be dumb or genius party. Mm -hmm. All right. Grimm's Notes, the animation. So whatever Grimm's Notes is. A lot of proper nouns. Storytellers is capitalized is and in quotes. Is it based on Grimm's fairy tales in any way? I would assume the so. Game, the game takes place God in a world. God damn it, stop making game anime. It's a it's an MMO show. It's just sword fart online all over again. We don't need another MMO show. So we can skip right over this, right? Chaos Tellers, Storytellers, Book of Fate. There's, there's no reason to watch this show. Okay, goodbye MMO show. All right. <laughs> well, this is the easiest one we've ever judged. It has the most straightforward English title in the history of anime. It is Girly Air Force, and once you know it, it's a girly Air Force. To be fair... No false advertising, no tricks, no must, no fuss. Girly Air Force. It's not even pretending, so good on ya. Yep. Evil creatures appear. Uh, mankind creates fighter aircraft called Daughters. <laughs> uh, Don't call them daughters. As well as the automatic fighting mechanism, they're shaped like human girls. If you ever wanted to have sex with an airplane, there you go. That also had boobs. This is the show for you. So do they turn into girls or is it like, or is it more like Wolf's Rain where they are just fighter jets? Don't ask. Don't tell. I'm kind of right. curious <laughs> now. Uh... Pastel Memories, Otaku Girls role-playing game, takes place in a little bit of 20XDX. Oh, wait a minute, Akihabara is in decline. I already said it's an MMO, why are you reading still? Akihabara, which was once called the Otaku Holy Land, it is. is now in decline after otaku culture itself has declined. Good. Yep. The show... They take on the role of a manager of one of the few remaining otaku shops. The manager helps to raise various talented otaku girls. Players in the girls battle of our, yeah. This feels like poisonous wish fulfillment. I think it even adds to the wish fulfillment because they're saying like, not only is it the typical wish fulfillment of otaku, yep. they purposefully made the premise of the setting like, hey, there's not a lot of otaku left. You're one of the few remaining otaku. You get all these girls to yourself. There's not a million otaku to compete with, <laughs> right? That is what the otaku mind is imagining when watching this show. I also really don't like the use of the word raise. Ver you know, raise. The manager helps to raise, it's in quotes, various talented otaku girls. Eh. All right. Koya no Kotobuki Hikotai. Ooh, airplane. A barren frontier. People trade goods. Post-apocalyptic airplane thing? Yeah, the setting looks good. The only thing that's throwing me off is the boobage and all the ladies in yeah, the poster. I feel like this is going to be a like everything mediocre... El everything else about it seems positive, right? You got that sort of Area 88 kind of sky crawlers plane feel, but in a post-apocalyptic setting, more like, uh, what was that? What was that one that we watched? The one with the... Uh... The, the, the first water? The, the Gonzo one. Yeah, with the first water and all that nonsense. Yeah, whatever show that was. I'm old enough to where I forgot the name of that show. I forgot the name of it also. Now I feel really dumb because I really like that show. It's whatever, but the point is... This feels like it's going to be a low-rent, booby version of that show and there's no reason to watch it. Yeah, but you know, you might get your old airplane dogfight post-apocalyptic stuff, which is good. I don't think you will. I All these boob lady characters. Here's what worries me. The airplane is drawn in a really detailed way, and then there's all these boob ladies. Just like the P90 is drawn in a really accurate way, and then you there's think all it's these a gun, You think it's gunslinger girls only with airplanes? I think, it's gun I think it's gunslinger girls with all right. airplanes. I don't know how to pronounce this one. What is... What is it's a capital W. Whoop, nope. Nope. The anime centers on Yukia, who is probably 14 years anyway, old. Anyway, it's capital W, apostrophe, lowercase z. So this kid, who's probably 14, spends his time DJing. He listens to house music. He uploads videos online. He, he wants to, you know, become a, a DJ, I guess. Yeah, one day, trying to get more views, he does something that can't be undone. He sees a live broadcast from that world. 
So really, this is like the crossroads. You make a deal with the devil to nah. be the ultimate guitarist, only he made a deal with the internet devil to become the ultimate DJ. I mean, there's a tiny chance there could be a good show here. Yeah, I like mean... Like, that premise of... The premise is, like, take that old Crossroads tale. Yeah. Right? I ate, the, take I ate that old devil who went down to Georgia and make it a devil who went to Georgia.com. Yep, I got 4chan <laughs> to make me the most popular DJ on Earth, but now 4chan knows my shit and owns me. Right. Like, that That concept could be good. Mm. It, at least it's creative. Yeah, I'm just... I'm really worried about the quote probably 14 years old, but... Doesn't give me any other warning signs, so I might just chalk that up what's, to the translation. What's interesting, it says that there's a parent show called Handshakers, and there's a side story with the OVA. Which is not out yet. Which is not out yet. The TV show, the parent TV show is finished. I, what does parent TV show mean? That this is a spinoff? Maybe like, remember there was Like, so, this is one of the characters from that, and it's focusing on them? Like, you make a show, and then you make a spinoff side show? I don't know. It's hard to say, because those relations... I, I feel like... There is a set of relationships between all these kinds of shows nowadays that is different from the old days where there'd be the OAV, then the longer shitty TV show version of that, then the spin-off specials. Mm. I feel like there's just there's a modern thing. Alright. Uh alright. Fukigen na Mononokin Suzuki. The second season of Fukigen no Mononokin. I don't even remember Oh, this is the eh. Is a kid who has a cute pet. Just a blob. I don't remember what we said about There's this also, one at all. Is that a kitsune down there? I think so. I don't know. Alright. Mm. Uh, I feel like every time there's a second season with nothing, and we don't remember the first season, we don't remember talking about the first season, and no one we know talked about it, and no one on Anna Twitter talked about it, you can just skip it. It looks like pretty boys caring for a kitsune and a cute thing. Yep. Maybe the kitsune is the cute thing. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we need to watch it. Nope. Kimono Friends 2. So, so Kimono uh, Friends 1 was a big deal that came out of nowhere. And it is really popular. And like, Anna Twitter just goes nuts people, about it. People love the shit out of this show. But because people went crazy about it, I actually did watch maybe five or six episodes of the first season. I hate to say it, I like... The concept is really good, especially the like sort of subtext of what this world is, like this post. -post the only interesting, the only interesting part was like, what's the deal with this world? But the show moves too slow. The jokes are way too. Everything else about the show was not to my liking. The jokes are just really shallow. The characters are really shallow. There's no meat there. There's a very low rate of jokes. It's like take a Simpsons episode, remove five sixths of the jokes and I could that's what not figure left. out why people were going crazy for the show when I watched it usually if I watch it even if I don't like it I can figure out like ah this is why people are way into this I couldn't figure it out I was like so what what's the part of this that people are going crazy for? I like everything about Kimono friends except watching it the only thing I liked about Kimono friends was what the hell why are there like giant slimes what's the secret of this world everything else didn't care yep it's just, so, it's really boring. If you're one of those people who's way into Kimono Friends, guess what? Second season, woo, party yeah. time and for everyone else. I look forward to memes and gifts, but I will not watch any more of the show. because well, Four it is... days from now, get ready on Twitter. People are going to be talking. Yep. All right. Circlet Princess. It looks like some girls in sci-fi and space. Near future eSport makes reality something something. Huh, will eSports be the thing that replaced the transported to an MMO fantasy world? Is this the first one? Is this yeah, ahead of the- so it looks like the plot of this is gonna be a typical anime plot, but the setting of it actually seems, you know, interesting and new. You have a bunch of girls in a school who are gonna form an eSport team and compete in the sport of circlet bout. Maybe it could be like battle athletes, but good? I, I mean, I like, I like the fact that visually it's sci-fi. Uh, it's a little booby. Yeah. Uh, but it's not that bad. And I like that it's eSport, um, you know, but I just wonder if the plot and characters are giving me. I'll bet it's just the first one. I'll bet five years from now there are no more anime based on MMOs where nerds get transported to them. They'll all instead be based on eSports teams. <laughs> and then eventually we'll get eSports team gets transported to Fantasy World. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, uh, you know, this is sort of, I guess, the other show that we just talked about. It was like, ooh, interesting plot, but meh, but this one yeah. is... Interesting setting, but meh. Yeah. All right. Piano no Mori 2. The second core of Piano no Mori. I didn't watch the first one. I didn't watch the first one either. But Nodame Katapole exists and is really good. Well, that was a... Right. So I feel like we. this is an unknown quantity, at least for us. So you can go watch a good piano-based anime, Nodame. And if you really need more piano anime, here you go. Because the thing is, the only thing... It does seem like it really is about playing the piano 
and classical music to some extent. The question would be, will they show entire or near entire concerts? I mean, look at how well that piano is rendered. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people standing around it wearing formalish wear. But normal clothes, normal people, pipe organ in the background I'm really interested in. And that face. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the sequel to Attack on Titan. I don't know, but yeah, uh, if you're into music, it's probably a good show for you. I sort of also, it says it's 12 episodes. I feel like Piano, it was pro it's probably really just sort of like a half season deal, right? Where it's like, okay, it's season two, but yeah. really it was a 12 and a 12 that combined for a one show, right? All right, so this one... <laughs> So, Rinshi, exclamation, exclamation, Ikoda-chan. The manga centers around the titular Ikoda, who works various jobs and explores the city nightlife. While she has a boyfriend, she's into casual relationships than taking it seriously. She's more into casual Oh, she considers popular girls, who she labels birds of prey, her natural enemy. So if you look at the, the cover of the manga, it's like, whoa, this is out there. This looks like fun, aimed at adults. Probably funny. Right, so there's a lot of nudity on the cover, but it's not nudity in the style of... Gross boob anime. Gross boob perverts for otaku dudes. It seems... It's more in the Ipatsu Kiki Musume, Miss Critical Moment style. I think it's more in the, like, sexual liberation, feminist, hilarity kind of style, right? I feel like this is just gonna be a comedy with some drama about I this think woman going, going out I, in the right. town. I think this is sexually liberated... Uh, you know, woman on the town wackiness. I'm gonna watch this. This, right? I, I'll I, give this an episode. I kind of actually don't want to watch it. I kind of want to read that manga. Ooh, I yeah. I kind of want to see what that manga's doing. The manga's still going, too. Oh, is it? It says releasing, so Ooh. I assume the manga's still going. Episode one's already out. Episode two will be out in five days of this recording. Oh, by the way, we're recording this on January 9th, yep, we're, 2019. We're, Magfest messed up our schedule. Right, so... Yeah, this this could be something, Rinchy Ikoda Chan. Yeah. What's up, Ikoda Chan? All right. Bermuda Triangle, colon, colorful pastrale. Uh, charming voices and under the dazzling lights. In the, is, that, is it Mermaid Idols? It's Mermaid <sighs> Idols. Yep, Mermaid Idols. That's all it is. Cheerful Moe Mermaid Idols. The end. Next. You're into mermaids. Mermaid Moe Idols. Okay. Meiji Tokyo Renka. Mm. Serious historical drama with pretty boys. It's the fifth anniversary event. Something it was officially announced a TV anime series based on Broccoli's romance simulation game. Oh, it's based on a dating sim. So there's a romance dating sim, but it seems like it's a dating sim where you're a girl who dates a bunch of boys, not the other way around. I think the boys are edging into triangle face, Utena outfit territory. A little bit. It doesn't seem like a... I don't know, I could be super wrong. Has there ever been a good anime based on a dating game? I don't know, maybe. But this is one of them. This is, I guess it's the anniversary of the dating game, and uh, now they're making an anime for that occasion. I don't trust games based on dating. I don't trust anime based on dating games, and I don't trust anniversary shows, so yeah. two strikes. But also, it, there was already a movie based on this, so... Yeah. Alright, whatever. Uh, Dimension High School. Why does the poster have all these live-action people standing next to High school boys are transported to an anime world. <laughs> While they're in cram So live-action people transported to anime world. This that's, looks like... That's a trope I haven't seen ever. This is like Cromarty, but Roger Rabbit together. This is like the greatest thing I've ever seen. I could... I, I'll give this a shot. High school boys transported to an anime world while they are in cram school. Do they, is it they just? They start school life in the anime world. Look, it really is. Whoa. It is like Roger Rabbit. Whoa. It is live action pretty boys going to an anime world, which seems Cromarty-ish to me. I'm, at least in a small way. I'm going to try I'm going to watch the show. I think we gotta watch this. Is this on, I mean, because this is a live action mix, is this on Crunchyroll or whatever? Would this be a drama or an anime? I mean, it's on Anachart, it counts. It is on Anachart, it guess it's an anime. Yeah, this is amazing. I, I'm, I'm intrigued. Do they turn, so in the poster, it shows them each standing next to an anime boy. So when, maybe it isn't Roger Rabbit. Maybe, maybe it's when, live action at maybe first. Maybe when they go into the anime world, suddenly they're now, all, they're all anime, and they're just be, the actors become voice actors. The real key and when will it goes be, back to the live action world, they're actors. If they if they go back and forth, if we if the live action characters appear beyond the first part of the first episode, I'm game. If we never see those actors again, I'm a little less game. 
It's unclear if they're only in the anime world while they're in school. Like, are they just going to cram school in an anime world, but the rest of their lives are outside the school? In the in live action world? We just don't know. We have to watch it. We gotta out. watch it to see. We gotta watch it. I'm, I'm surprised and intrigued. Alright, all right. B Project, Zecho, Z-E-C-C-H-O-U, Zecho, Zecho, asterisk emotion. I didn't watch A Project, I'm not watching B Project. The second <laughs> season of B Project, it looks like idol, idol nonsense. It looks idol boys, I yep. think. It's an idol boy anime. There's a lot of, vo of boys. There are many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's more than ten. Too many boys. Anyway, if there's a boy you want, he's in B Project. Next. Virtual San Wapitu. Nope. Nope. Oh, so what this is, is people might not know this if you haven't been paying attention, but in Japan, mostly, but also other places, I guess, there's this thing that's being popular, that's not popular in the U.S. as far as I can tell, of VTubers, which is someone makes a YouTube channel, but instead of putting themselves in the YouTube channel, they create a virtual 3D character. I was thinking about doing that like for a, our Live Geek Nights. Right, like a Hatsune Miku. And then the Hatsune Miku, it's like, it's Miku's YouTube channel, but instead of making it Hatsune Miku an existing character, they made up a brand new character. So they make up a brand new CG character, mm -hmm. they give them a YouTube channel, that person appears in all these videos, right, usually just talking head, and now the person behind the YouTube channel provides all the dialogue, voice, animation, mm -hmm. but the YouTube channel is presented as if the 3D character is a real person who has a YouTube, who, ha who owns and runs the YouTube channel. Which is fine. Even though they're a virtual person. So, this virtual Sanwa Miteru anime is a 3D anime, which, I don't know what the story is, but they've taken a bunch of popular CG YouTube characters from different channels and made an anime starring many of them together. It would be like if I made a YouTube, uh, uh, an anime, or a, a real TV show, and the stars of the real TV show were like the top 20 YouTube personalities. That would be hell on earth. Right, so you get your, your stupid pie, and yep. your, your whatever else is dumb guy. Ninja name. whatever. Right, well Markiplier. Ninja's, a, Ninja's a Twitch streamer, but you get the idea, Yeah. right? I, just, I don't see any world where this is interesting to watch from an American perspective. No, but what I do, the idea that I got when I first heard about these virtual CG YouTubers is that we shouldn't make one of those, but what we should do is create a 3D CG character to use as like a, a an in-between, right? It's like a Moltar or a Toonami, as like the, oh. right? You wanna make a Moltar for Geek Nights? Right, right, so you should have some sort of Moltar slash, what was the other guy, Tom? Yeah. You should have some sort of CG character that is not the channel, but is like, you know, the host of the YouTube channel. You use them for all these sort of in-between break bits, the start and the end of the video. I feel like Ignites, we need to step up our game and make a Multar. Right, but you know, I think that's the appropriate usage of a virtual character for your YouTube channel. Uh, but I ain't like watching a, this like anime. a mascot for your YouTube channel as opposed to being the channel. Yeah. Anyway. But I ain't watching this. No, I There's just know. no way it's interesting. Star Twinkle Precure. Do you like Precure? Do you like cute? Like little kid magical girl stuff. If you stuff. like little kid magical girl stuff, there's even more precure. There's precure every season, just about. It's always on TV for the little kids to watch the precure. Precure pre seems like it's the big current one. I, I, I'm pretty sure that if I, you know, if you're a little kid in Japan and you want to watch magical girl stuff, yep. and you're in elementary school, precure is your biz. You got precure notebook. You got precure backpack. You got pre right. It's just it's the one. You're watching precure when you get home from school, right after you finish your homework. <laughs> Alright, still going. Alright, Manaka no Rikun. So I feel like I've seen this kid somewhere before. It reminds me of... Two people, have, I've seen two people in my feed using that kid's face as their avatars on Twitter. Right, so basically I get the vibe that this is a comedy for kids. Sort of like a Captain Underpants or a Crayon Shin-Chan, only, yeah. only less dirty than Crayon Shin-Chan. I was getting a Crayon Shin-Chan but not a little dick. Right, like a less dirty, more kid-appropriate Crayon Chin Chan, where you have a little kid who's mischievous yeah. and funny and up to no good, and there's some cat people, I guess. Maybe and he's up to just good. He doesn't look like he's trouble. He says mischievous boy. Yeah, right. I think he's gonna be low-key mischievous. And he has an eccentric family. It's a home comedy, so I think this would probably be really funny if we watched it. Yeah. But, yeah, whatever. All right. That's, That's it. it. That is our pre- Judgment of the winter beginning of 2019 anime season.
There's like three pretty solid looking shows here. Yeah, there's some good stuff that, you know, it, it doesn't seem like there's a large quantity of shows, but we got some Dororo, yep. and we got the, uh, the live action one. I'm checking that out just to see what the deal right? is. Right, you got some more Mob Psycho, maybe, that, maybe we'll check it out, see what's going down, right? Uh, so maybe yeah. I'll skip the second half of Mob Psycho 1 and just start on 2 and see if I still like it. Mm -hmm. You could watch the end of Mob Psycho 1. No. Nah. Just skip right Just skip the middle? I mean, the second, you third. Could, I mean, you could just watch it and fast forward when stuff seems boring. Mm. If stuff seems boring. And That's not a bad idea. I used to do that when I was trying to watch a couple of Shonen shows back in our, like, right. the there end were of like two, There days. were like two episodes towards the end where all they did was run around the enemy base trying to find the boss. Uh. Right? <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, so yeah, there you go. We will be back. Judging in the spring of 2019 in about three to four months. Uh, sorry, this episode was a little bit late. What are you going to do? I think it's going to be late every year. Uh, let us know in the comments how we judge the previous season and how we judge this season, right or yeah, wrong. If you don't tell us we're wrong down there, we just assume we're 100% right. All right. We need to be called out big time. Tell us how much we suck or how smart and perfect we were. The end.